Okay, welcome everyone to episode two of the Full Body Science Applied series. So in this video, we're gonna go through the second full body workout of the week on our new five day per week high frequency split. And as before, if this split just seems totally crazy to you, make sure you check out my science explained video on high frequency training to put it in context. So in this video, we're hitting a chest focused workout. So even though we're still hitting our full body, we're prioritizing the chest by placing it earlier in the workout, which has been shown in the scientific literature to increase strength and performance. So we're kicking things off with three sets of three reps on the bench press with 85% of our one rep max. And even though they're not max effort sets, they're still quite heavy, which begs the question, do rep counts as low as three belong in a hypertrophy focused program at all? Well, I think it depends. I personally like to include some pure strength work because first of all, I'm not only concerned about building muscle, I also care about getting stronger and strength is specific. So if you want a stronger bench, you've got to lift heavy. But secondly, I think a lot of people underplay the fact that low rep strength work does actually contribute to hypertrophy both directly and indirectly. Indirectly, getting stronger in lower rep ranges is gonna allow you to overload more heavily in more moderate rep ranges, leading to more cumulative tension over time. And in my opinion, as you get more advanced, continuing to get stronger is important for continued progress. Also, as long as volume is matched, research shows that low rep sets cause similar hypertrophy as high rep sets. In 2014, Schoenfeld and colleagues split subjects into a group doing three sets of 10 reps and seven sets of three reps, and found that after eight weeks of full body training, both groups gained the same amount of muscle. However, it's worth noting that the heavy workouts took over four times as long to complete and had a higher dropout rate. So it probably wouldn't be sustainable over the long term. But contrary to what we used to think, low rep heavy training can build muscle. It just isn't always the most practical way to train. So when it comes to the bench press, we generally want to use external cues rather than internal cues, meaning you wanna focus more on moving the weight with good technique rather than worrying about the mind-muscle connection. In fact, despite the fact that recent evidence has shown value in using the mind-muscle connection on some isolation exercises, over 15 years of research has consistently found that an external focus on the movement itself improves motor performance, including strength. So with this in mind, I'm just gonna run through a sequence of a few cues I've picked up on over the years. First, you wanna squeeze the bar as hard as you can before lowering it. Next, think about bending the bar forward, which is gonna cue your elbows to tuck in a bit and help maintain upper back tightness on the bench. As you near the bottom, actively puff your chest up and then push the floor away from you as you press the weight up and back. So in terms of progression here, we're alternating heavier sets of three with relatively lighter sets of five from week to week. And the idea is for those heavy threes to have strength carry over to the fives, which will then have strength carry over to eights later down the road. So building up this raw pressing strength can help you continue to make progress as you get more advanced, even if your main goal is hypertrophy. All right, up next, we're hitting low to high cable flies for three sets of 15 at an RPE of nine. So because this is an isolation exercise, we can push these sets a little closer to failure without having to worry as much about fatigue. And here I like to cue for all three biomechanical actions of the pec by thinking about hugging a big tall tree. So you're not only hugging, you're also lifting your arms up because say the tree is really tall. And I like to have my palms facing up at the bottom and then down at the top to take the pecs from a fully stretched to a fully contracted position. And this cueing is gonna allow us to train horizontal shoulder adduction, shoulder flexion, and internal rotation all at the same time. Okay, after that, we're hitting three sets of 12 reps on the Romanian deadlift. Now, because RDLs cause so much muscle damage by loading the hamstrings in a highly stretched position, we wanna be mindful to stay about two to three reps shy of failure as sore hamstrings can really deteriorate future training performance, at least until the repeated bout effect starts to kick in around week two or three. But regardless, I usually try to bracket any workout I do RDLs with low impact hamstring work. So you'll remember from day one that we hit lying leg curls. And then on day three, we won't actually do any direct hamstrings work at all to allow for adequate recovery from these RDLs. Also, we're not doing any direct quad work on day two because those squats from day one tend to be pretty disruptive. And I usually try to have one day of recovery after hitting those. So we'll give the quads one day of rest before jumping into the leg press that we'll be hitting on day three. Um, so it isn't the point that you need to hit every muscle every single day. You want to think of it just like taking your weekly volume that you'd need to make progress on any split and just spacing it out evenly across the week in a way that makes sense for performance and recovery. And I prefer to use RDLs as a lighter mind-muscle connection type movement. I find that if I load them too heavily, my lower back simply takes over. And remember from Technique Tuesday that you should simply focus on setting your hips straight back. And for most people, the end point should be just below the knees. And going deeper than that will often just result in lower back rounding. 
All right, up next, we're hitting a chest supported row for three sets of 15 reps. Now you can do these on a T-bar machine. The key is just that they're actually chest supported. Remember from day one that for the most part, we're alternating between a vertical pull and a horizontal pull. So today it's time for a row and we're opting for a chest supported variation just because it spares the lower back. With high frequency training, it's really important that we not overtax the spinal erectors since they play a stabilization role in most free weight compound exercises. So by bracing your chest, you relieve the lower back of that stabilization role, allowing for more recovery there while still smashing the mid traps and lats. And one thing I've been doing on these lately is really exaggerating the scapular protraction and retraction, allowing the weight to sort of pull my mid back apart at the bottom and then really retracting all the way at the top. Okay, next we're hitting the standing Arnold press for three sets of 12 reps. Now, the main reason I like doing these standing is that there is a bit more of a stabilization role to be played, which means there might be more involvement from the lateral delt. And I really try to emphasize my lateral delts in my programming because in my experience, they can tolerate quite a lot of volume and they're just so important for developing that X-frame broad shouldered appearance. Another thing I'm focusing on here is initiating the press by sweeping the dumbbells out, almost like doing a reverse pec deck and then pressing them up. This way you can get the rear delts involved at the beginning. And then as you press, the side and front delts will contribute more. All right, after that, we're moving on to three sets of 15 on the tricep press down. And on this split, I'm alternating between bicep and tricep isolation work from day to day. So on days we do tricep work, we won't do any direct bicep work and vice versa. Now, both of these muscles get a lot of indirect work from all the compound exercises in the program. So I think they only need about six to 10 sets of isolation work per week, especially when the effort is very high for them as it is in this routine. Also, I'm doing these one arm at a time, starting with my weaker side, and I'm allowing my elbow to come forward a bit to stretch the triceps at the top, and then I'm hyper extending my shoulder at the bottom, turning the movement into a sort of push down kickback combo, which absolutely smashes the long head of the triceps, at least for me anyway. And we're gonna finish out the workout with some Smith Machine shrugs. Again, similar to the chest support on the row, the Smith Machine is gonna help spare your lower back since it won't have as much of a stabilization demand. Now, of course, if you don't have a Smith Machine, free weights will still work fine, but as an extra recovery precaution, especially since I've had lower back issues in the past, I really like the Smith Machine for these. And we're gonna go with the usual cues here. We wanna use a wider grip to emphasize scapular upward rotation as the upper traps don't only elevate the scapulae, they also rotate them upward. So think about shrugging both up and in, like you're trying to lift your shoulders to your ears. And remember, the shrug isn't a contest to see who can hold the most weight. So while cheat shrugs certainly can have their place in the context of a high frequency plan, I think it's much smarter to emphasize more controlled movements using a lighter load and a stronger mind-muscle connection. Okay, and that's gonna be it for this workout, guys. I'll put a link to the first leg-focused full body workout over here if you'd like to check it out. And I'll put a link to the next back-focused full body workout over here uh, once that actually goes live. Um, if you're interested in having all this information put into a complete 10-week training program, you can check out my new high-frequency full body program designed for intermediate to advanced level lifters over on jeffnipper.com. Don't forget to leave me a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.